Well, good morning. Good morning. We want to welcome you to our beginning of Holy Week, our Palm Sunday celebration. And I think it's going to be a wonderful Sunday morning. We've got some beautiful young voices that are going to sing for us here in just a minute. And I think we're all going to be blessed by that. And not only will we celebrate Palm Sunday this morning, but we will walk through the Passion with Christ today in Scripture, being reminded of what He has done for us. And hopefully in hearing that, we can say to ourselves, I can set aside a Thursday and a Friday to come and worship my Lord and Savior who gave His life for me. Those services, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, are both at 6.30. So uh, we'd love for you to come join us. If you're visiting this morning, we would love to have you on Thursday and Friday as well. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper on Thursday, and Friday will be a service of darkness. It will be our tenebrae service. Uh, just a few announcements for you, and I'm going to try to do this quickly because my wife, she's been watching at home more than usual. <clears throat> she says I talk too much, so we're going to try to get through these. Uh, I've been told by a good source that if we're expecting 200 people, or even more than that, we're in need of a few more casseroles. So we're at 16. I've been told the magic number is 20. So I just posted a really great casserole that has bacon, I think, and sausage, and eggs in it. So if you need to, look on my Facebook page. You can probably find it, and you can bring it. You don't have to label it for pastor, but you could. That's okay. Um, then also, we've been... We want to encourage everybody, if you have your name badges, you can find them, that you would wear them, uh, especially next week when we're going to have visitors here, so that they can see a name and maybe say, oh, well, there's Rick, or, you know, there's Kathy, or whatever, just to help them. But it also helps the pastor and his family get to know everybody as well. It allows us to pretend like we know you if we haven't really gotten to know you yet. So just an encouragement. And then this is also an encouragement. Some people come early and they enter the sanctuary because they want to pray. And they want to prepare themselves for service. There are prayers for before service in your uh, hymn book. But sometimes we come early because we want to socialize with others. And I get that. I'm a very social person. So what we're going to ask you to do, if you come early and you want to talk to people, put your purse down, put your books down so you save your place. We get that's important. And then stand out in the narthex and talk to people. And while you're talking to people, you can welcome visitors and, and let them know that you're glad they're here. You can welcome people you don't know, whether they're visitors or not, and be glad that they're here. Now, next week is Easter. So if you were in Bible class, you know what I told you. We need to be on our best behavior because we're expecting 25 to 30 visitors, people who say, man, this is maybe where I want to go to church. But if we fail them on the eye test, and they're going to say, well, I don't want to go here. So what that means is I will do my part. I will make sure the services are ready. I will make sure the sermon is good enough for them to say, okay, I could listen to this again. But I need each one of us then to say, I'm going to come not just to meet my friends on Easter morning, but I'm going to come to meet those visitors that the Spirit of God has called to this place. And so I want you to reach out and shake hands of people that you don't know and welcome them. Don't be afraid that it's somebody you forgot during COVID. That's fine. Just say, well, I haven't seen you in three years. I just forgot you, okay? And say, but now I'm glad you're here. And to that end, I made a promise in Bible class, so I'm going to keep this. It's a little different, but the first 50 people that come to me Easter morning or after and tell me that they met a visitor, I would like their name. Now, kids, you can do this too. I would like you to be able to tell me their name or maybe even introduce me to them and say, hey, Pastor, I met a visitor. I'd like you to meet them, okay? I have 50 crisp $2 bills that I will give to those first 50 people that greet, come tell me they met a visitor because I believe it's that important that I'm willing to pay you for it, okay? And apparently you can't get crisp $1 bills, so you have to get crisp $2 bills. And they are crisp. I have been going through them and looking at them like, wow, these are really crisp. So, they're ready for you. You meet somebody, either bring me over and introduce me to them, or come say, hey, I just met Joe and Steve, and I want you to know that, and I'll have them with me. I'll feel like some kind of important person with $200 sitting in my pocket, uh, or 100 bucks sitting in my pocket. I can't even do the math. But I'll hand them out to you, okay? What you do with your $2 is up to you. If you want to put it in the offering plate next week, you can, or you can keep it. That's fine. But let's just be looking for visitors and make them feel welcomed. This is our moment to seize what the Spirit of God is doing. The people are ready. 
Two times that people are ready for the gospel. Funerals and Easter. So they're going to come and they're going to be dressed up pretty and we want to make them feel special and pretty. So let's do our jobs next week, okay? Let's just be ready. And let's be praying in our prayers. Let's be praying for them that God will fill the rest of these empty spots with people who don't know the gospel or don't have a relationship with Jesus and then pray that we can be the place where they can develop that relationship. And then lastly, just an update. Uh, Two o'clock this morning, I got a note from Bianca saying that Boaz was able to eat some goldfish and he kept that down and didn't have any issues so they're going to let him try some pancakes this morning Um, so he has a nasal gastric tube in to help relieve some of the fluid and gas in his stomach but they clamped that off yesterday so it seems like we're making a turn for the better our prayers would be that he could just be home soon and mostly so mom could be out of the hospital as well so I thank you for all your prayers your support transportation and meals and everything. It has been overwhelming to us. And so just thank you very much. If I forget to say it personally, just thank you as a congregation, as a family. We appreciate it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to invite you to stand. We're not going to greet one another this morning. We're going to stand and face our processional cross. with you all. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gather to greet your dearly beloved son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our king and when he comes again may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they had heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace.
comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh, and to suffer upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was of the number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you, that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. And behold, the hand of him who betrays him is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. They, be they began to question one another which of them it could be who was going to do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let, us, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For who is the greater, one who reclines at table, or one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials, and I assign to you, as my Father assigned to me, a kingdom, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny three times that you know me. And he said to them, When I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, Nothing. He said to them, But now let the one who has a money bag take it, and likewise a knapsack. And let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. For what is written about me has its fulfillment. And they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said, It is enough.
And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, and Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the man, the Son of Man, with a kiss? And when these, those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he not denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is that that struck you? And they said many other things against him, blaspheming him.
When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes. And they led him away to their council, and they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see some sign done by him. So he questioned him at some length, but he made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him, and Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then arraying him in splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day. For before this, they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was misleading the people. And after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of our, your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas, a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder for whom they asked, but he delivered Jesus over to their will. Of Cyrene who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus and there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him 
But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching. The ruler scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The others rebuked him, saying, Do, not fear, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due rewards of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. And when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for the spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home beating their breast. And all his acquaintances <clears throat> and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. And there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, who had not consented to their decision and action. And he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. 
The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day they rested according to the commandment. Our service began with praises from the lips of children. It concludes with the cries of crucifixion for Jesus. The people there in Jerusalem yelled, Hosanna to the Son of David. Lord, have mercy on us. And as we conclude the gospel, we see that God, our Heavenly Father, did have mercy on them, and He has had mercy on each and every one of us. For this week, each step takes Jesus closer to the cross. For us this week, each step takes us closer to the empty tomb. A reminder of our salvation. The reminder that our sins are forgiven, those that we remember, those that we can no longer recall. All forgiven. Because Jesus shed his blood on the cross for our sake. Because he was stripped naked in our place. Because he bore on his head the crown of thorns, a crown that was fit for a sinner. A crown that was the perfect size for your head and for mine. So as we prepare for the journey to the cross, we do not journey as those who mourn without hope. We journey as those who are standing on the road shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Lord, have mercy on us, knowing that our King has already come. Yes, riding on the colt of a donkey dying on a cross and rising again so that you and I might have the promise of eternal life. May this sustain us today, throughout this week, and through all eternity. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again, the dead, into heaven, and sits at the right hand. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God Almighty, Christ our Lord did not count his equality with you something to be grasped, but humbled himself 
Grant us a mind like his to spurn all worldly equality and humbling ourselves to find your great portion in this life of the world to come. Lord God, your son humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross. Fix the faith of your church fast upon his death for our salvation. Enrich the proclamation of this gospel and enliven our hearts to live out this faith until Christ comes again in glory. Heavenly Father, you sacrificed your own Son on the cross, that we all who would be called your children increase the faith of all Christian fathers, that they would receive Jesus and his sacrifice for them, and so be enlivened to sacrificial love for their children. Lord God and King, your Son entered into Jerusalem as the true ruler, poised to lay down his life for his people. Grant that same mind to those in authority over us, that they would discharge their duties even to the least among us, and so receive your commendation. Lord of hosts, your Son Jesus Christ came to deliver his people from all evil. Take away the fear of all who suffer in this world, especially those that we now remember before you. As they await the fullness of their salvation, fix their eyes upon their crucified Savior. Almighty God, your Son humbly rode into Jerusalem to the shouts of Hosanna, so that he might give us righteousness and salvation by his death and resurrection. Mercifully grant that we would repent of our sins and rejoice in his presence as he visits us with his body and blood in his holy supper this day. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, show to us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna. Save us in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy... Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way also after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance up upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.